much for the invitation. I must warn you that I'm, I am a physician. Uh, so I was a little bit frightened by the presentation before, but I will try to deliver my message the best I can. Uh, these are the projections, projections of uh, OECD. What, what are the, the, the factors, the environmental factors, as infectious diseases or air pollution in the future in the projection of the, the, the what are the reasons that you make a, our life to be uh, shorter? So uh, health scientists did well in water waterborne diseases, in treating malaria, but air pollution will be the dominant cause of death in the environment in the next years, if the things continues to be so. The projection that uh, you, by 20, uh, 2050, we will have about 3.5 3 million deaths per year. Uh, this, this, this graphic is wrong. We got this in 2012. So in 2012, 3.5 million people died because of air pollution. So this is the, there is clear a mismatch between air pollution levels and CO2 emissions per capita. Countries that have higher emissions of greenhouse gases do have lower, good for you. <laughs> Um, so I will try to, to be closer to the microphone. So the higher levels of pollution occurs in areas with relative low emissions of greenhouse gases. So if you also the air pollution and you multiply the concentration of PM10 by the number, by, by population of density, uh, which means attributable risk, the attributable risk of dying because of air pollution also occurs in air, some in specific areas of the world. If you divide the concentration of PM10 of each country by the CO2 emissions per capita, then you have a marker of uh, technological inefficiency. How much local pollution you produce for a given amount of CO2 emissions. So, Energy inefficiency index is a business of the southern hemisphere. So this is one of the messages I could I would like to deliver. Uh, deliver. Health co-benefits, immediate co-benefits of uh, greenhouse gas abatement will be achieved if got through a better technological improvement, you'll be more important in developing countries. So this is the, a graphic the representation of the pictures that I showed before. When you do the PM2, how is the PM2, PM10 over CO2 uh, index spread or divided, disaggregated across continents or areas of the globe? So it means that uh, a, pe a person living in Africa emits about 50 times more local air pollution per unit of CO2 than in, when compared with North America and Africa. So, this is, this is another study from our group showing again the map of air pollution in the world in the upper right panel. In the right upper left panel is the number of publications related to health effects of air pollution. There's clearly a mismatch. Areas with high levels of pollution doesn't produce science on air pollution and health effects. And this is not the case for malaria, for instance. People in Africa produce science enough to provide or to produce local solutions for malaria, as well as for diarrhea. So not only technological improvement, but also a scientific network is needed to promote co-benefits when reducing both greenhouse gases and local air pollution concentrations. 
I was educated in this world. I was naive enough to imagine that science will drive everything and not all policies will be made based on economical grounds. I was expected to live in this kind of city. But then, unfortunately, there is a program called the Global Burden of Disease, financed by the World Bank, that showed the following. If you are just a simple function, uh, when the average life expectancy is plotted against uh, GDP, the message was, get rich, you live more. But this is not true. This is true, these countries that have li higher life expectancies, all other confounding factors, such as education, a sense of citizenship, conditions of uh, 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 social security are different from those here. So you, this is Saudi Arabia, higher GDP, low life expectancy. The question is how this GDP is divided is important, and also what means GDP? The real GDP of Saudi Arabia, uh, 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 Saudi Arabia is, will be how much money will be uh, remain in the country when the oil finishes. So when you trade oil for money, you are trading one kind of value by other. So I, I think this is also important to consider, but unfortunately we follow this path. And uh, the, model, the, the world that we live is this one. In this world, we, the most important is to publish in nature. In this world, the most important thing is to become rich. This is the city I live from my balcony in the morning, Sao Paulo. This is a concentration of PM 2.5 in the streets on, on a daily basis. The background, the, le the acceptance, uh, the level of acceptance by the WHO in 24 hours is 25. If I decide to expose a given individual to PM 2.5, my ethics committee will not allow me to go over 100 micrograms per cubic meter. It's better to rent a bus, to providing free, free tickets, and making measurements in the buses. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the mo small scale variation. This is the levels of NO2. This is the, uh, the main avenue where the medical school is. This is a cemetery. There is no traffic, in, at least in, in the, my, my perception. Other people feel other types of traffic in the cemetery. And so it is. There is a marked exponential increase in the traffic corridors. We spend three hours per day, the average in Sao Paulo, here. So even if the concentration does not increase, the dose increases because we, we are in the worst scenario for longer. So I think this is important. Traffic is important as well. This is a filter of PM 2.5 in my office, 24 hours after, 10 liters per minute ventilation rate of a human individual. A, they, we have this kind of uh, metals and several hydrocarbons. And this is a real lung of a non-smoker, 50 years of age, uh, marking, indicating that there's a deposition of black carbon into the lungs. Also, social contrasts are important in determining health disparities, so we have uh, different lives, different access to health, different permeabilities within a very narrow space. Uh, if, we, if we explore this uh, socio-economical disparity, for the same increment of air pollution, 10 micrograms per cubic meter, in the most affluent zones, you have 2% two, two increase in mortality, in the less affluent zones, 12% of mortality on the next day. This is the rate of slums in the city and income and education. So not only have been a child or elderly people, 
or a cardio, well, an individual with cardiopathy or pulmonary disease is important. Social economic factors are important effect modifiers. I was trying to, when I teach uh, pneumonia to my medical students, I, 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 I usually tell that having a pneumonia depends on the vulnerability of the host, the pathogenicity of bacteria, and the, uh, the load of bacteria, or the, the dose I receive. Then a meteorologist called Michelini Coelho fit the model uh, in the, and the simulated is the, the, the observed is the rate of uh, hospitalizations due to pneumonia in Sao Paulo, and she fitted this model that fits quite well <laughs> using PM 2.5 ozone, lowest temperature of the day, and uh, relative humidity measured at noon. She didn't need a single information about the bacterial load, the vulnerability of the, 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 the patient, and the pathogenicity of bacteria. These are black carbons collected by induced sputum in children by Griggs in London. And there you see that children living close to roadways do have deposition of black carbon, and when they plot markers of pulmonary function in those children, we observe that there is a decrease in indexes of flow, expiratory flow, and lung development. So chronic exposure to particles do impair the growth of the lung. So our lungs develop until seven to eight years of age. In low level inflammation at this period, impair the development of the lung and reduce the functional reserve of those patients. This is a very interesting study conducted in Germany by Annette Peters. And the question, what you did differently in the day that you had a myocardial infarction in respect to the three preceding days? Uh, people infarct more in the mornings, and this is time spent in traffic. In the days that you have a myocardial infarction, you have more traffic in those patients, at least in some of them. And the infarction occurs two hours before you, you leave the, the traffic jam. Is that true? So we, we had to look for people that died several times. And there are this group of people, those that have implanted defibrillators. When you have a implanted defibrillators, the, the machine triggers a shock and takes you from the light tunnel that you enter uh, uh, when you are crossing the border. And then, uh, the, so these are perfect individuals because this, this machine have a, you can record and track the moments that the, the person probably would have died if it didn't have the defibrillator. Then you have a, 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 a measure, a, a instrument that measures uh, PM 2.5, and this is the feed, the risk of the implanted defibrillator to fire as a function of PM 2.5 two hours before. This is called the is, is, is stimulation of vagus nerve and depression of sinoatrial node, the, our natural pacemaker. So then you have uh, the chance of a ectopic focus to take over and doing sudden death. This is publishing Lancet, is a meta-analysis that show what you re how you read this study. This is the relative risk. If you use cocaine, you have 25 more chances of having a myocardial infarction than the control population. But this is the attributable fraction. So the risk is high, but very few people in a given population uses cocaine. So the number, the attributable ca cases of myocardial infarction due to cocaine is less than 1% in the world. What is the most uh, dangerous things? get in traffic. The sad thing is you cannot do exercise to drink, to be sad, to be happy, <laughs> and to have sex. The control is to die because of boredom. I think this is a very nice, very sad word. 
Recently, IARC, the International Agency of Research in Cancer Delivery in Lancet, the estimates of cancer attributable to air pollution. So air pollution was attributed to the level one of evidence. Uh, for 10 micrograms per cubic meter, in, meta, in, in co large cohort studies conducted all over the world, we have a 10% increase in lung cancer. For non-smokers, it's 25. For adenocarcinomas, it's about 38. Of course, the cigarette smoking is about uh, 15 times more, not, not 10%. But the cigarette, you can choose. Air pollution, you can't. Let me explain the difference. This is a very nice study of finishing my talk. This is the, a study published by Arden Pope, Majid Dezati, and Douglas Dockery at New England Journal of Medicine. This plots life expectancy as a function of chronic exposure, the ambient levels of air pollution in the early, late 70s, early 80s. 55 communities in, in USA. The slope is about 1.2 years per 10 micrograms per cubic meter, uh, adjusted for age, race, prevalence of diabetes, hypertension, and other chronic illness in, the, in each community. Uh, for this reason, the EPA set the standards in 15 because apparently there is no effect beyond or below. Then the cities made, they made their homework. Pollution decreased, the slope is still there. When you plot the two periods, the tendency is much more evident. Every city that cleaned the air increased the life expectancy. Sao Paulo is here, like Los Angeles in, 50, in, in 58. Curitiba is a city in, some, in Brazil that has attained to the air pollution standards. If I decrease air pollution, I will gain 3.5 years of life expectancy. If I quit smoking, I would gain seven. So smoking is much more dangerous to your health than air pollution. However, 20% of people in Sao Paulo smoke. 20% of seven is 1.4 years. For on the, on the, your private decision, it's better to quit smoking. For public health grounds, it's better to reduce pollution. This is the message. I was uh, in Geneva delivering the same talk uh, in a meeting of the prepar preparatory meeting to the climate summit that we are having in New York. And the message is how you convince people to change their habits and to have more sustainable attitudes. What we propose to people is unrealistic. We say that if you leave your car at home, you don't eat red meat, you stay in the dark at night, have one shower per week, temperature you drop, you start to decrease in about some five, six decades. And the first living entity to be benefited is the polar bear. This is not, is not how people think. They should think immediate benefit, have immediate benefit in their lives, in their city, at their homes. If you decrease 20% of head meat, the risk of cancer of the gastric tube decreased by 14%. Diabetes decreased. When you use, use public transportation, you walk, in the case of Sao Paulo, about four to five kilometers per day without noticing. This increases your life expectancy at the same time. So there are immediate co-benefits when you adopt more sustainable attitudes. And this is the message that the physicians should deliver to their patients. Using the, cell, the selfishness inherent to human 
individuals, those that adopted sustainable practices, already did. They don't need to be convinced anymore. We should convince those that buy these large SUVs that consume more than they have. And I think that the health sector didn't play the significant role until now. The good news is that WHO will consider climate change as top one priority in, the, in its agenda for the next 10 years. The bad news is that it's too, it's, it arrived, this conclusion arrived late. So I think this was the way I, I there is a space for immediate co benefits. For the individual uh, of greenhouse gas poly, uh, reducing emissions, for the individuals you deliver the message, your health will be, will improve. For the government, you say that money, the money that we will avoid in expenditures, in health expenditures, by far overcome the, the costs of implementing sustainable practices. In the case of bicycle, for instance, the for each active transportation by bicycles, but for one unit of investment, you gain 42 units of this investment in 20 years. This, so you can monetize health and present them as a way of fostering and contribute, contributing to uh, greenhouse gas emissions policies. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, I think we are all thinking. <laughs> some are thinking, some are thinking. Okay, uh, questions, uh, comments. I think we are all reflecting about this. Sorry for the lung, but I think it's it's. Paul. Uh, just to reinforce, I think it's an incredibly important point that you make about the synergy between climate change measures and the benefits that you can get for mortality from air quality. And they're often forgotten because they're very different time scales upon which they act. You know, climate's somewhere in the future, air quality's the here and now. And I think you make a very compelling case and, and, and can show very strongly that they're not separated and they've got to be thought of in, in, a, in a beneficial way. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Someone else? David? Uh, thank you very much for that talk. It was a very compelling uh, demonstration of the health effects. Can, can you go back to that uh, reference, the New England Journal of Medicine, I think it was, just so we can... No, no, I, 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 it was not the, the reference, and it's not here, but uh, it, it was published in New England Journal of Medicine. If you go to the PubMed and you put Pope, Zadian Dockery, and Air Pollution Life Expectancy, is a large cohort, the largest cohort, that was originally designed to investigate risks of cancer. But they took advantage of this American Cancer Society cohort because in the cities that they have actual measurements of air pollution. And also they computed the risk of having cancer because of air pollution. And there are two cancers that are associated with chronic exposure to air pollution. Lung cancer and probably bladder cancer as well. Okay. Uh, I don't, I don't see really. Guy? So, just like for climate or for um, tobacco smoking, the information about air pollution has been extremely broadly forecast. Still, in all cases, climate change, maybe tobacco or uh, other environmental hazard, but also air pollution, 
we see that little progress is made very often, that the people might not really react. It has to do with psychology, it has to do with uh, fear of change, and so on. So you're a medical practitioner. So what, how do you think we can communicate with people about all these environmental issues so that something be done, so that government reacts, so that private sector reacts, and so on? I think that health sector made better in tobacco smoke than with air pollution. I think physicians are not prepared to deal with lower relative risks and larger attributable risks. In another, and also, when you advise a patient quit smoking is a personal, direct, high-to-high per -high communication. Now physicians have to deal with other sectors that they are not used to. Transportation, energy, land use, uh, agriculture, uh, political and uh, uh, options for developing economies. I think the message of health effects was delivered in Europe and the USA. This is the result of the drop. This resulted in a significant drop of air pollution, uh, and, and then, since they have so clean process, people we still uh, now are comfortable with the air pollution and want to consume the as much energy they want. I was surprised I was in Boston three weeks ago, and there is a new SOV of Cadillac as a monster. One year of waiting list. Uh, so, and the, the, and the monster is clean. However, when you go to China, the, 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 the energy need was increased, and they returned to the London situation of 1952. So, health co benefits, my message, will be more, the population will be more sensible to this in developing economies rather than in developed economies. I think this is my personal guess. Well, we, are, uh, we have one more comment from Tan Su. <coughs> Thank you very much for the wonderful talk. Um, you use the people's selfish. Uh, intention to, to address the issue, but uh, also air pollution is also a collective uh, responsibility. So how the individual could take uh, the actions uh, or to benefit the airway including itself. This is in, and the other things, um, even we take action now, it takes years, tens or 20 years. So we, how about in the meantime, is any, as a clinical doctor, any recommendation for the personal preventive actions for that? Okay, let's take a, there's a nice natural experiment conducted in Dublin when the mayor banned coal for he, home heating in one day. Mortality due to cardiovascular diseases and respiratory diseases dropped next year. Cancer took five years. So uh, we, if you have one a uh, modified cell, usually using the gross rate of a can of, uh, normal cancer and division, the doubling time, it takes five years to have a nodule that you can diagnose. So if you don't have cancer at that moment, you, are, you, you risk decrease. So I think this is the message we should deliver to the patients. Adopt uh, efficient, even if you don't decrease pollution, by walking, by using bicycle, by eating less meat, your, your, your health will, benef will be benefit independently of the effects of air pollution. Depends on your habits. After the discovery of antibiotics, anesthesia, vaccines, and life support strategies, we will die because of what we eat, what we breathe, what we drink, and our personal habits. Fortunately, sustainable practices modify for the better our habitus. I think this is the message that physicians should deliver to their patients and for governments. You are spending this sulfurizing diesel, the ratio, the ratio of investment by, and uh, the, the relation is for one unit of investment, you, you gain $8 in five years in avoidable admissions, hospital admissions. It's a good business. Governments will be 
you act according to the economical interests, and I think that patients will act on their own interests. I think this is the way I think.